Hey everyone, Synthetic Future here, and today we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to do some creative DAW routing. Um, important to note that this is a tutorial for Reaper, um, all the new versions of Reaper, so make sure your Reaper is up to date. And later on in this video I will show some uh, more DAW generic kind of ways to use this te technique. So if you don't use Reaper but are still interested in doing feedback loops, you can go to the uh, description and there are some links to where this video will resume in a more uh, general way and not in specifically a Reaper minor tutorial. Let's start off with the basics. So when we're talking about feedback, we are talking about a output signal going back into your signal chain. Now the most a well-known source of feedback is of course microphones and stage monitors where the sound from the stage monitors is captured by the microphone it is amplified outputted by the stage monitors back into the microphone amplified and you get this constant loop of amplification which results in very high obnoxious noises now <laughs> this is also a point of note that it is a little bit of a dangerous art to do feedback loops. And you should also uh, make sure you take some safety precautions when working with feedback loops. Uh, also so for all you audio engineers, if you do a show, first thing you should always do is have a limiter in place. Please do this. It will really save your ass and your ears, more importantly, when things go wrong. So that's an important notice. Make sure you are working at a reasonable volume and make sure you have a limiter in place. And that being said, let's go through the process of setting up in Reaper. So if you're not using Reaper, you can go to the description now and click the link uh, where the video continues. Now, because it's important to lead by example, we will start off with placing a limiter. So make sure you have your mixer. You can just open any effect slot and you want to search for a limiter and you want the hard limiter. Now this isn't a very uh, nice, subtle, smooth solution for limiting. This is just uh, the DAW cutting off your uh, sound at a certain volume. And now we'll leave it at zero dB, which should be plenty hard. Uh, also note that Reaper has by default a setting that will cut off your volume if you uh, make the signal too hot. But I believe it's much higher at like plus 20 or something. And I am not going to blindly trust that this uh, setting is active. So we're just going to place this hard limiter just as a safety precaution. All right, step one. Step two. Uh, Reaper uh, doesn't allow feedback loops by default, which is another safety precaution to make sure people don't incidentally make a feedback loop. So we are going to have to tell Reaper that we are going to do this knowing it may cause issues. So you need to go to File, and if you go to Project Settings, you have the Advanced step, and there is a setting called Allow Feedback in Routing. It already says it can result in lower performance and loud noises. So again, be warned. Click the little box, press OK. Now we are ready-ish to start messing with uh, this routing scheme we're going to do. So for this we need three tracks. We need our source, which I'm going to conveniently call source. We need a bus track and we need the effects. We want to run it through. You might also want to open this little uh, track wiring diagram because you're going to need it. It's way faster than all the other options. You can find it in the view and in track wiring. Uh, this is one of the, I think, Reaper 6 functions. So make sure you are updated if you don't see option you're probably running an old version. Uh, and most of the time you can get a free update. So just grab it. All right. So this shows us our free tracks. Not very exciting right now, but we all start somewhere. 
let's set up our source first. So I'm going to use my MIDI keyboard, my MPK Mini, and I'm going to use just a piano. You can use whatever you feel like using. I will use addictive keys. No, shouldn't be very surprising. It sounds like a piano. Awesome. We are going to mute this channel for now. There we go. And now we are going to route. So our first step is actually, we can do it several ways. Let's do it the, the neat way. We're going to keep this to master, but we are also going to route and you can click the little plus icon and you can actually drag, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, how far you go left and right determines the input of your uh, receiving channel. We want to receive on one and two. So we're just going to drop it here. No, actually we're going to drop it here because we want to go to the effects. Bam, there we go. So now our, uh, then this is still safe to unmute. So I'm just going to unmute to demonstrate. So if you play a note now, it will output it to the master. It will output it to the effects and it will go back to the master. So you will see both of these light up. And it should be slightly louder. There we go. So that's our first routing. I'm going to mute this again. So it's going from our piano into the effects. We don't want to go from the effects to master, so we're going to turn this off and we're going to route it into our bus. Again, we want to go to the first two. I can still unmute this, totally fine. Very little changes. The only change is that it is now going through the bus. So if I hit a note now, all three will light up. And this uh, lower one will no longer output to our uh, master. You can also achieve this by uh, just dragging it up to make it a child. Uh, but I want to show you the most basic of ways to do this. Now we are going to make the feedback loop. So this is where we actually mute, because now it's important. And we are going to take this output from this bus, a little arrow thingy, and we're going to go back out into our effects. There we go. So now the sound travels from the piano into the master, it travels into the effects, into the bus, into the master, and it travels from the bus into the effects. Back to the bus, back to the effects, etc. 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 Now we can open this little thing the send free effects. We're going to keep this here. And I'm going to start off with lowering the slider just a little bit. So let's put it at minus uh, 0 0.1. All right. Now we can actually, oh, let's get you back here. Can I actually pin this? No, I can't. So that's a shame. So now I'm going to unmute this. Nothing happens until we play a note. So there we go. Now we have a feedback loop. Now it is important to keep this loop uh, downwards. So the uh, signal going back into the effects should always be a reducing line. So you want to keep it at minus something uh, and the overall level should always be lower than what is going out of it. So you need to do a little bit of a balancing trick. This is also why it's important to have this limiter because it's pretty easy to misjudge your uh, sound levels and create horrible noises, which we are going to do on purpose right now. Uh, so we are actually going to make it amplify on each turn, much like the microphone and the stage monitor. And I want you to be aware that I am running a limiter. I am also running my personal sound pretty low. And I am going to keep my mouse pretty close to the mute, <laughs> just to be sure. 
And if it gets really loud, I will actually edit the sound levels down in the video. So don't be afraid that you're going to get anywhere near as bad of an experience as I am. Uh, but I just want to show you what happens when you do this wrong. Just so you don't have to. Although you're free to do it. <laughs> so let's put it at 1.1. Uh, uh, actually, let's keep it reasonable. Let's put it on 0 0.2. So now every time the signal goes through the amplifier, it will be amplified by 0 0.2. There we go. And actually, the limiter from uh, <laughs> Reaper itself kicked in before the heart limiter even. So, yeah. You need to be extremely careful with this stuff. Let me just... And the speed at which this happens depends on how much you're going over uh, over the level. So right now it was amplified at, at 0 uh,0.2. So if you can imagine if you have like a uh, half a tone out of balance. That's how fast it amplifies. And if you're running this over speakers, it gets really extremely loud and it can damage your equipment, it can damage your ears for sure. So yeah, please be uh, careful and vigilant. And also keep in mind that I'm um, running a VST as input now, so it's an entirely dry signal. If you're running a microphone or if you're running a guitar or any input really, you are dealing with the noise of your interface. So that noise, that little bit of noise, will be amplified, 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 and it will do this exact same thing. In fact, thinking of it, let's just do that. Let's do exactly that just to demonstrate how incredibly fast things can get out of control. So I'm going to use Biome. I'm planning to use Biome anyways. Amazing plugin, by the way. No, we're going to start off with Lion, actually. Let's start off with Lion. That's easier. Get some Lion in there. Let's get Biome out of the way for now. Cool. Now we want to mute our piano and our Biome. And we just want to use Lion. And what we are going to do is we are going to send some noise into this uh, contraption we've made. Now, I want to make sure it's very subtle noise to start with, so I'm just going to um, really push the gain down until I only see a little bit of a tremble here. All right, so that's cool. I am going to disable this scent. Uh, can I easily disable this? No, I will disable this master scent. So we are just hearing... There we go. So that's a pretty soft noise. I actually doubt you can hear this on YouTube because it will probably be compressed out, but that's that's fine. So let's get feedback going. And shoot. All right, I didn't. I messed something up. Aha, there we go. So that's how fast it actually is. I didn't even notice it already auto muted the signal because it, yeah, it's that really high. <laughs> well, there's some editing work for me. That's how fast this thing escalates. There we go. So that's just the tiniest bit of noise being re amplified, and that's how quickly this thing can get out of control. So please be very careful with this stuff if you're messing around with it. And it's best to use uh, clean inputs like VSTs because, well, there's not so much risk of things going horribly wrong. Uh, that being said, let's actually start having some fun with this. Enough with the warnings, let's make some cool stuff. Because that's what we're here for. So I'm going to re-enable my piano. I am going to put this into a downward system. So we're going to put it at zero, uh, minus 0 0.1. Now we can actually unmute this channel. Cool. Awesome. And now we can start loading effects. It only took us 60 minutes. There we go. Not that bad. So in the effects channel, we are going to start off with the most basic of basics. We are going to just do uh, feedback in the delay. 
Now, this isn't particularly useful because almost every delay has a feedback knob, but still, just for demonstration's sake, here we go. Very unexciting, right? <laughs> and just to give you a little bit of feel. So that's classic delay feedback where you keep the delaying feedback sound. You can actually amplify this with feedback in your delay, so you get delayed, delayed feedback stuff. Which is a little bit odd. Um, you can put it on a really short delay. To get a very low, uh, lo-fi reverby thing going on especially with sand when you can actually dial in some diffuse just the tiniest bit of uh, woe in there and if you want to play some fun actually up the mix a little bit to make it ever so slightly wider because it is amplifying of course so it's going wider 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 all the time and now No, feedback on delay in a very complicated way. But that's not what you came here for. Now, one thing to note is it's, it's actually pretty smart to have a delay running uh, at the start of your feedback line because it sort of drags out the time in your feedback loop because it has to go through the delay every time. So it gives you a little bit more time to work with. Um, so usually I would say start off with a delay and put all your other effects behind it. Not always necessary, but it's definitely a good place to start. Uh, so let's do just a bit of delay, the 16th. There we go. Now let's add some sample degradation. So that's nice from Sandman. You can actually just reduce the sample rate right here in the plugin. And now... Might actually have to extend this a little bit because it's dying out a bit fast. Still dying out a bit fast. So every time it loops back through Sandman, it will have the uh, sample rate reduced. And if you go pretty extreme, the thing to note with Sandman though is that it also reduces the <laughs> delay time. I sort of forgot that. So now we're also getting a very slow delay time. That's the basic gist of uh, of having fun with this. So let's make it a completely dry delay a short time and let's add another effect behind it so we're actually going to the biome that's where i want it to go there you go because now we can mess around a little bit we can use some saturation and some other interesting stuff an important thing to notice especially with saturation is saturation works on a signal which is fairly hot so you want to run it hot into the saturation and then you need to cut it back down because otherwise you get the amplifying loop of doom or something. Uh, so we can actually fairly easily manage this with the mix utility. Uh, we can also use the output gain, whatever you feel more comfortable with both work. So we're going to actually push it into the saturation. Let's not go too crazy. And this is going to take a little bit of experimentation. So we're just going to do distortion and we're going to drag it way down. And now we're going to just play something into it and see what happens. It's going fairly well. Okay. 
Actually, it might want to hit a little bit harder even. delay a little bit let's try here can also just go straight up uh, wave falling or something so let's just uh, ooh. <laughs> can already see it move a little bit so let's disable Could also disable the master to just get the messed up signal. And you can also do this with uh, stuff like reverbs, it's pretty cool. Let's do the lo-fi, I think the bokeh was pretty cool. A little bit of pre-delay.
So there we go. Now the nice thing of biome is you can actually modulate some of these parameters to have some uh, motion in an, your feedback loop to make it go louder and softer by its own. Uh, just for demonstration, just a simple elbow to this again. Might be a little bit too aggressive. Let's just keep it bouncing around here, just around decaying and rising. Let's actually put a delay here to make it a little bit more visible. That's how quickly things can escalate. Got to keep vigilant. <laughs> No, we should be safe again. A pretty effective uh, setup if you want to play very avant garde. Yep, so there you go. <laughs> You can of course do this with any plugin you want. You can put anything into this uh, little FF FX bus that you want to use. It can be distortion, it can be reverb, it can be delays, it can be pitch shifters, spectral stuff, whatever you feel like messing around with. So there's a bit of long demonstration tutorial guideline for doing this stuff. Just make sure you have a limiter in place. Just make sure you are not running your gear at a very high level when messing with this until you have it perfectly dialed into where you want to use it. Uh, but even then always take a little bit of caution because it can definitely spiral out of control really fast. So I hope it helps you a little bit. And uh, yeah, well, uh, that's it for now. <laughs> See you around. Bye bye.